Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session we introduced core and discussed some examples. So now we continue the study of this core. Uh, the most important thing we would like to say that the core if the allocation is not in core that means there is some correlation which can be improved. So this is a very important fact and if an allocation belongs to the core that means for each player unilateral deviation will not make player strictly better off. If once something is in core no player would unilaterally deviate because he cannot change it without decreasing someone else's payoff. So the, thus the core is a very interesting uh, concept. Now we would like to say when the core is non-empty. So core need not be non-empty all the time. So there is some characterization of the core non-empty. So let us we will start describing this characterization of games with non-empty core. So this uh, basically it is due to Shapley and Bondareva in independently. Okay. So, uh, we consider the following uh, linear programming. So, let us say we are given this uh, transferable utility game NV, then look at this min x1 plus x2 plus so on so xn subject to summation xi inc. This is bigger than or equals to vc. This is true for every subset c written in n. And then of course x1, x2, xn, this is an rn. So basically we are trying to minimize x1 plus x2 plus xn such that summation xi is bigger than vc where the summation is taken over all i in c and c is a subset of n. So now this is basically set of linear inequalities and then you are minimizing a linear function. This is a linear. Okay. So, once you take this thing, this is basically a kind of an allocation once you take this one. So what is really happening is that which is uh, the this LP determines the minimum amount of transferable utility which is necessary for an allocation so that no correlation can improve upon it. So this LP definitely has a solution if it is feasible. If uh, this pro linear program is feasible then there will be a solution and uh, this is because all the inequalities are greater than type and also there is a structure which makes it feasible. For example, if you take this one summation xi has to be vc all of them are this thing and you are minimizing it. In fact, uh, uh, you can say that this is a the x1 plus x2 plus xn each x1 is bigger than or equals to this thing. So therefore, there you can easily say that there is a lower bound certainly and then even mathematically one can see that there is a solution to this problem. Okay. So in fact, uh, one can verify that this is feasible also from the linear programming argument. So let us uh, take uh, let x1 star, x2 star, xn star, let us say this is optimal solution of let me call this as LP here. This is the linear program of this. So, so what would like to say is that x1 star plus x2 star plus xn star this is certainly bigger than or equals to vn. Okay. So, this is the main thing that is why the difference is what you can change. Okay. Now there are two possibilities. One is this x1 star plus x2 star plus xn star is strictly greater than vn and in this case the core is empty. The second thing is x1 star plus x2 star plus xn star is equals to vn then in fact x1 star 
x2 star xn star this in fact belongs to the core of NV. Okay. So, in fact uh, as I said let us go back to this one why does this linear program have a solution. So, even if we simply look at it you are looking at the linear equations which are above something okay. and then you are looking at the sum of entire thing to be minimum. So, all of them for example, v1 plus v2 plus vn is a lower bound to that one and then you are looking at infimum among them. So, they are uh, certainly lower there is a lower bound for that and then you are looking at the the infimum of so this x1 plus x2 plus xn having that one. So, therefore, one can easily see that uh, this program even just purely looking at from an optimization point of view you can say that there is a solution. Now, once you have this solution, so let us call this solution x1 star, x2 star, xn star. Now, the sum of that by this uh, inequality constraint we know that x1 star plus x2 star plus xn star has to be bigger than vn. Now, if there is some solution where this x1 star plus x2 star plus xn star is equals to vn and satisfying this then that should be the solution because you are looking at the minimum. If there is a, if every solution of this one if the sum is bigger than vn that means the core has to be empty. So, that is basically the what these two points are saying. Okay. So, if x1 star plus x2 star plus xn star is strictly bigger than vn the core is going to be empty if that is equals to vn then core will be Thing. And in fact note that this can never be less than Vn because the, by the very definition of the linear program this has to be greater than or equal to Vn. Okay. Now in fact in the previous examples whatever we have uh, discussed we can actually try to write down the linear program and see what is really happening. So I will not go into those details. Now we would like to ask when the core is non-empty. So let us uh, look at the the linear program. So, our linear program the pl primal problem let me write it is minimum summation x i i in n subject to summation x i i in c is greater than equals to v of c, c is contained in n and then x is in of course r n. So, this now if we write down the dual of this problem it actually becomes the maximum of for each correlation c we have a number alpha c v c and then this uh, summation is over n for each of this inequality you have a number and then you write down that and then th this is subject to summation alpha c is equals to 1 of course c is c contains i and this should be true for every i in n and alpha c greater than or equal to 0 for all c. So, here I am using the uh, LP duality results. So, if you write down the dual for this problem, so this for each inequality you have a number alpha c. So, that is what I am saying here alpha c for each c, each inequality that is indexed by c alpha c into v c is basically the total worth v c and I need to the summation of alpha c for each i although c contain in i that should be 1 and alpha c. I will not go into this LP results but let us look at this. So, now we have this uh, strong duality theory in the linear uh, programming we have a st strong duality theorem. So, if primal has an optimal solution then the dual has an optimal solution and the optimal values are same. Of course, I am not going to give the details of this duality theorem. So, if we apply the duality theorem the primal has a solution then the dual has a solution. In fact, you can also say that if the dual has a solution then uh, primal also has a solution and in such a case the optimal values are going to be same. So, now in this present case we know that the primal 
problem has a solution. So, therefore, the dual problem will also have a solution and then the two values are going to be equal. So, so we apply this strong duality theorem that means there exists an X star in Rn and alpha star C for each subset C in N so that we have the following thing. Let me write down summation Xi star I in C is greater than or equal to V of C this is there and alpha star C is greater than or equal to 0 this is again true for every C contained in N and not only that alpha star C summation of alpha star C is 1 for all C containing I this is true for every I in N. So, this is going to happen. So, we are basically writing the, these conditions if we write down those conditions these are the things the solutions X star and alpha star they should satisfy this one. Now, let us now look at the following thing. So, summation alpha C is equals to 1 where C contains I for every I contained in N. This is the condition that we have this implies C, C contains I alpha C Vc is less than or equal to Vn. Okay. So, this is uh, what, it, what we are saying this is the feasibility of the dual problem. The feasibility of the dual implies the objective function of the dual is less than or equal to Vn. So, so this is exactly the what we are uh, looking at it this particular thing. Okay. So, the this alpha C V C is less than or equal to V n. So, now uh, of course, sorry I think there is a small error here this is C this is subset of n. Okay. So, if this feasibility implies this if I take this as a condition then uh, what we can easily say here now is that um, the optimal value is going to be Vn because we know that the optimal value has to be bigger than or equals to Vn and here we are saying this is less than or equals to Vn therefore both should be same Vn is there. So, under this condition this automatically implies in fact uh, this is going to be a necessary and sufficient condition. So, whatever this condition is basically characterizes. just the, the non emptiness of the core. Okay. So, this is basically the known as a necessary and sufficient this is known as a balanced -ness. this condition is known as a balanced condition. Okay. So, let us uh, now define the games. So, a TU game N V is called balanced if and only if C contains I alpha C I is equals to 1 implies summation C contained in N alpha C V C is less than or equals to V N. This condition is balanced condition that we introduce if a game satisfies this condition then you call that as a balanced game. So, what we have proved is that every balanced game has a non empty core. Okay. So, when this condition is satisfied we call this game as a balanced game and what we have proved says that a balanced game has non empty core. Okay. So, now we switch to another important uh, solution concept for cooperative games which is called Shapley value. So, now we will 
switch our attention to Shapley's. Okay, so now let us uh, get we are interested in now Shapley value. Okay. So, the before I start about the Shapley value let me just recall that in this cooperative games the core can be empty or non-empty even if it is non-empty the core can be infinite set. So, therefore, exactly choosing a correct solution is a non-trivial fact. So, the Shapley value is another solution concept which is uh, we can define irrespective of what kind of a uh, uh, whether it, the game is balanced or not. So, it, ha it always defines a unique value. So, we, we will now spend time on discussing this Shapley value. So, let us look at. So, let us start with in the cooperative game and let us take a, we are interested in developing a solution concept VV which is basically the allocation for each player. The Shapley I, uh, develops a solution concept which basically satisfies certain axioms. Okay. Uh, the whole idea here is that these uh, the solution concept satisfying these axioms is uniquely given by the Shapley's value. So, we will now discuss these axioms. So, Shapley's axioms we will start discussing. So, let us uh, take a permutation we start with the game n y let us say pi is a permutation on n. Then consider n pi v is a game such that the following thing pi v of pi i i in c is nothing but v c. Basically what we are doing is that we are permutating the permuting the players instead of uh, giving 1 to n let us say we give them index pi i pi 2 pi n then the uh, their worth of that correlation is basically given by the with the, the original ranking C. So, pi i, I belongs to C is the let us say permuted uh, names of those players then uh, the original names is given by C itself. Therefore, the for them the worth of this particular uh, permuted correlation is exactly V C. So, now this is uh, not. So, that means the role of the player i is essentially same as the role of the player pi i. So, okay. so this is uh, a new game. So, what Shapley okay, before I go further let us introduce a simple example. So, so that this concept will be illustrated better let us take n is equals to 1, 2, 3, 3 player game and then uh, let us define pi 1 to be 3, pi 2 to be let us say 1, pi 3 to be 2. Now, n pi v is going to be the following thing pi v of 1 is nothing but 1 is a new index for the original player 2. So, therefore, pi v 1 is simply v 2. Similarly, pi v 2 the 2 is the new index. So, that is given to the original player 3. So, therefore, this is going to be v 3 and then similarly pi v 3 the 3 is the new index that is given to the player 1. So, therefore, this is v 1. So, like that we can look at the other situations for example, pi v of 1 2. So, 1 is the index of the player 2, 2 is the index of player 2, 3 therefore, this is nothing but v 2 3. So, like that we can do it this is basically the idea of this, this thing. So, the axioms are basically the following thing symmetry, linearity, then carrier. So, these are the axioms. Let us start explaining these axioms symmetry. 
okay, for any V in R 2 power n minus 1. So, take any uh, characteristic uh, form V then any permutation pi on n and any player i in n. So, what I am saying the pi i okay, of pi v is same as phi i v. So, what it says is that it does not matter the player what name you are giving it his whatever he gets he will get he will get the same thing in any permuted situation whatever name you give it to him he will always get the same thing this is the symmetry assumption okay so the second assumption second axiom is linearity so let's consider two games nv and and W okay, and define P let us say P is a number between 0 and 1 now consider N P V plus 1 minus P W new game where P V plus 1 minus P W of C is nothing but P V C plus 1 minus P W C that is this is defined for every C in N. So, we are if we are adding 2 games and the worth is just sum of the individual worth. So, what uh, the linearity says is that if a player i in this sum of these 2 games P v plus 1 minus P w whatever he gets is nothing but the sum of what he gets individually that is P v i v plus 1 minus p phi i w. So, note that once again here like in uh, Nash bargaining thing we are defining the solution concepts through certain axioms. So, we are defining this solution procedure for all classes of games for any game you take it and what then you assign some value and that should satisfy certain axioms. So, that solution rule should be linear here. So, this is the of course, here we are only taking the convex combinations, but we can always look at directly also without convex combination here. Okay. So, let us look at the other assumption, the carrier. Okay. So, equation D is said to be carrier of this correlation game and v if v c intersection d is same as v c for all c contained in n. Okay. So, what it is saying is that if uh, v of c intersection d D is a, a correlation which we want to call it as a carrier if then V of C is same as V of C intersection D. So, whenever D you intersect with D the worth of that is not going to change V of C intersection D is same as V of C this is true for every C. Okay. So, now let us look at it look at the following thing what exactly does it say let us say D is a carrier. Let us take i not in d. Then what is v i? v i is nothing but v i intersection d because d is carrier and i d is not in i therefore d intersection i is empty. So, this is nothing but v of empty that means this is 0. That means if a player is not there in this carrier that means he is going to get a 0 value okay. uh, his worth is 0. Therefore, so if D is a carrier all players 
j in outside d are dummy players ok. Because their entry into the coalition does not add anything when they join any coalition they are not improving the worth of the coalition. So, in fact you can say that V of C union I is same as V of C for all I not in D. This again follows from the same this thing. So, we are, if I is not in D then by adding I to a coalition C they are not, you are not improving the worth of it ok. In D is the basically the only players who can influence some worth. So, that is this thing. So, the carrier axiom is the following thing. phi i v is 0 for all i not in d. If, if a player is dummy then he should get 0 value. So, this these are the axioms that Shapley introduced then using these axioms he characterizes that his value Shapley value as a unique solution concept satisfying all these 3 axioms. We will continue the proof of this Shapley result in the next lecture and with, uh, today we will stop with this. Thank you.